Good morning. Welcome to Zion Lutheran Church School and Preschool. We are happy to have you here on this beautiful Sunday morning in the Black Hills. I have been told that tonight will be different than this morning, that the snow is coming in, but while the sun shines here, let us enjoy it. Lots of stuff going on. The first thing, bulletin's pretty fat because there's a lot of announcements, a lot of things. I won't go through them all, but please hold on to your bulletin. Take a look at what's going on. First thing I do want to bring your attention to is this first announcement. You might skim past it because it's been in there for, I don't know, past few months. A lot of the time, Pastor Paul and I get, oh, Pastor, I know you're so busy. I don't want to bother you. I would have called, but I didn't want to be just another bother. Our joy, our excitement in ministry is spending time with you all. And so it is not a bother to be called and asked to come for a visit. It's not a bother to bring communion to shut-ins or visit you in the hospital. That's what we enjoy doing. We live for being with you and hanging out with you. Even if you're able-bodied, we love to get a phone call. Hey, you want to come over just to visit? So really, our numbers are on the back every week. Give us a call. Send us an email. Let us know if you want to hang out. You are not a bother. We are not too busy. We are busy with you. And that's what we enjoy doing. Okay, what else? Ladies, if you want to play softball, see Allison Flaherty. I hear it's a good time. I don't know. I don't play softball, and I'm not a lady. But if you are, enjoy softball and are a lady. See Allison Flaherty, her information is there on page 16. We're filming right now. Everybody say hi to the people at home. We're filming right now. Going on Facebook Live. It will be going on YouTube later on today. So if you know of someone who is still at home, who is still not comfortable coming out, point them to our YouTube and Facebook. That information is on page 17. Men of the congregation, page 18. Men of the congregation, we've talked about this the last couple of weeks. May 1st, put that on your calendar. We're going to be gathering, time of fellowship, time to listen to Mike Allsteel tell us about being a man of God, what it means to be a spiritual leader in your home, a spiritual leader in your community. And who knows what could come out of that? Who knows what kind of men's ministry, what kind of Bible study groups, what kind of fellowship groups we can pull out of that. The more participation we get, the greater the possibilities. If you are coming, however, please give our office a call just so we can jot your name down. Um, you know, logistics of trying to feed the difference between feeding 20 people and feeding 80 people. We'd rather feed 80, but we need to know the 80 are coming. So if you're coming, please give us a call. Again, that information is on page 18. Last announcement I have, page 19, VBS this summer. We are having VBS. We had to cancel it last year because of, I don't know, the thing called COVID. But we're having VBS. It will be a little modified. We've got a morning session, an afternoon session. Registration opens tomorrow. VBS registration opens tomorrow. All the VBS information is there on page 19 or uh, Becky Aker has got that beautiful poster out there in the narthex. Grab one of those information flyers, give us a call in the office, or, uh, yep, give us a call in the office and we'll get you hooked up with VBS. Okay, like I said, there's more stuff in there. Take a look through. Any other announcements we need to bring before the congregations this morning? Great, let's stand and greet each other in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.
As you're able, please rise. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen in me! Alleluia! In your presence there is fullness of joy. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up. And I have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. O Lord, you have brought my soul from Sheol. You restored me to life from among those who are See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God, and so we are. Gracious Lord, by your name you have called us your own children, and we are to pray, praise, and give thanks to you. Yet we often choose not to see the love you have given to us, letting other things of this world impede our vision of your mercy and grace in Christ. We do not always live as you have called us to be as your children. We confess our sins to God in repentance, turning from those things that lead us away, turning back to you in the love you've shown. Almighty and ever compassionate Lord, we are by nature sinful and unclean. We confess our many failures as we have not followed you joyfully and trustingly. We have not loved others as you have first loved us. 
and our thoughts, words, and deeds have not been pleasing to you. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us to delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, as his children, may he keep you in his grace by the Holy Spirit and grant you a renewed life on earth and finally a triumphant life with him in heaven forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O Almighty and Eternal God, you have assured us of the completion of our forgiveness and new life in you through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. You call us your children through the waters of baptism and give us eyes to see your love for us in your only begotten Son. Give us the will to show forth in our lives the faith we profess with our lips. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Today's reading is from the book of Acts, third chapter, starting with the 11th verse. While he clung to Peter and John, all the people, utterly astonished, ran together to them in the port portico called Solomon's. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people. Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety, we have made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. And you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers, but what God foretold from by the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all the things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is from 1 John chapter 3, and we will read the epistle responsively. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is.
Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. This is the word of the Lord. As you're able, please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Again, we take a moment right now if you'd like to open up your Bible apps or find Luke chapter 24 in your Bibles. Our gospel reading begins at verse 36. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer, and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please join with us now as we make our confession of faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. 
we invite the children to come up for the children's message. All right, gang, we're going to be over here today. Mr. Rasky, if you could get the lights for me. So you guys can take a seat on the chairs. We've got to look at the screen. All right. All right. Who here likes to go camping? You've never gone camping. That's okay. It's okay. Who here has ever gone out of town late at night and stared up at the sky? You got to get outside of Rapid to do it. You see that, right? You see that? See that, that, that cloudy looking strip right there in the middle of the screen? What is that? Our galaxy. Our galaxy. We are on the edge of the Milky Way galaxy. We are just one little tiny little pinprick. Our sun is just one little sun. You know why it looks so cloudy? Because those are all the stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Millions of them. Millions of them. Sometimes when I go camping, I like to lay on my back at night after the sun's gone down and just look up and see that. And usually I don't have any other words besides, wow. Have you ever seen anything that's really just made you say, wow? Yeah? Yeah, Langston has. No one else has ever seen anything amazing before in their entire life. You've seen the Big Dipper. That's cool. Anything amazing? Anything amazing that you've ever seen before? You, you guys are about the dullest children I've ever been around. <laughs> Nothing amazing has ever happened. Something in your life made you say wow at some point. You might not be remembering it, but I'm sure there has, and, and it's always the Milky Way for me. It makes me say wow. To look up at that and see that God created that. Now here's the thing. You all are getting a little older, a little older each day. And these people back here, these are adults. And adults teach you to be calm and not get too excited over stuff. But I'm here to tell you that's all nonsense. Be a kid. Be excited about it. Be excited about what God's made. Be happy to say, wow. Give God glory and thanks for what He's done. Never grow up so much that you forget to be amazed at what God's done, what He's done in the sky, what He's done on the cross, what He's done in your heart. Hold on to that. Hold on to being a kid for as long as you can. Because let me tell you, when you're an adult, life's dull. We don't say wow enough. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank You for all that You've done. We are excited by Your creation. We are excited about being part of Your creation. We are excited about your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, let us never grow up so much that we cannot be called children of God and be excited by what you have done for us. Lord, we love you and thank you. And all God's kids said, Amen. Amen. Man, the adults were way louder on that. All God's kids said, Amen. Go back to your seats. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Rasky.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to be honest with you, and you can verify this with my wife. She will, she will back me up. I hate being an adult. <laughs> being an adult is dull. Amen. Yeah, thank you, Joe. <laughs> being an adult is dull, and it's tedious, and it's work. Oh, is it work? I'm just reading an article this morning that we just passed tax day that got moved to May 17th. I'm like, oh, shoot, I haven't signed my taxes yet. I got to put that on the to-do list. My life is run by that to-do list. Always something to do, always something on the schedule. And I know I said at the beginning of the service, I want you to call me so I can get you on the schedule. But that's the part of the schedule I like. See, being an adult, we get to see the underbelly, the ugly underbelly of the world around us. We watch too much news, probably. That ugly underbelly of the world gets into us, and it dulls us. It dulls us to the, to the magic that is childhood. It was childhood. And at some point, we grow up to be adults, and then we, we have children of our own, and then we say something atrocious like, why don't you just grow up? Right? I've told my kids that in one form or fashion. Now part of that, yes, we need to grow up. Peter Pan we're not, and this ain't Never Never Land. Right? My dad used to tell me the, the difference between a boy and a man is responsibility. And I hated that phrase until I started using it on my own kids. It's part of us that needs to grow up. But there's another part as we look at our kids and say, why don't you just grow up? We're telling them to stop being excited over little things. Stop dreaming about what might be and only live in the reality of what is. Why don't you just stop playing with toys? Grow up and, and move past the wonder and the dreams and the play. This brings me to Pastor Paul's very excellent sermon from last week. Now I'm going to talk a lot about Pastor Paul's sermon today. This is not to degrade the sermon because it was fantastic. But it's to show you that we live in a world of tensions. I want to show you the other side of that tension. For those of you who missed it last week, Pastor Paul had a great sermon on Christian reality, on what will be, what we know will be. He started out with the, the idea of that Southwest Airline commercial, do you want to fly away? And then he brought that to Christian reality, that at, at the end of days, at the end of our lives, we don't fly away somewhere. We don't leave this creation. When God talks about a new heaven and a new earth, he's talking about this place only better. We're not going to fly away. We're not going to sprout wings. We're right here. This is our home. This is the home God has made for us. What he's trying to say is that we need to pull our head sometimes out of the clouds and put our feet firmly on what is. It was very much a sermon on Christians, it's time to grow up. In his sermon, he made a passing reference to Star Trek. And I couldn't let it go. <laughs> he made the reference to Star Trek that someday, you know, as Gene Roddenberry has laid it out, that, that you know, Captain Kirk and Spock and McCoy are flying through space and he says, you know, what we know about interstellar physics and space travel, it's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. And Paul, that was a stab to my heart. It was a stab to my heart. I grew up watching Star Trek. 
Star Trek VI came out in 1992. I was sick as a dog all week long. I still made my mom take me to opening night. I love that show. I still do. I can watch it at any time. I love the wonder of it. The wonder of flying through space, flying through, through the heavens. When I was a kid, I would go to sleep and I'd dream about it. I'd dream about being on the bridge of the USS Enterprise, exploring the cosmos. And then I'd wake up, and I'd take my little Star Trek toys, and I'd play as though I was there. And then I grew up. I put the toys away. And the dreams became muted. Some of the wonder faded. I grew up, and a large part of me wished I hadn't. And so when I hear, when I hear 1 John 3, and I hear John calling me a child of God, I want to hold on to that. I want to be a child of God with the emphasis of child. Because I want to be back and I want to experience that unbridled joy of living in His creation. And I say unbridled, and I say that very specifically, because unbridled is what kids are and adults are not. As adults, we rein things in. We're taught not to be too excited. We're taught to be even keel. Not so high, not so low. We're taught to restrain the wonder. Adults' response typically to the beautiful, to the awe-inspiring, to the breathtaking is, I've seen it before. We're taught not to run with excitement anymore, but to walk single file with our hands down at our sides, calmly. It makes me think of the hymn, I want to walk as a child of light. Who knows that hymn, I want to walk as a child of light? The hymn makes me laugh every time I hear it, I want to walk as a child of light. What child walks? We have a sign. Miss Berkmeyer, what's that sign say in our hallway? Are you walking? Yeah. Right in front of Mrs. Selinsky's door. Are you walking? We've got, we as adults have to remind kids to walk because if we weren't there as adults, you know what they'd be doing? Running and skipping and hopping and jumping and squirming and wiggling. They'd be riding their scooters and bikes down the hallways if we let them. Because that's what kids do. They're excited about living. They want to run. It's we adults who slow them down. Tell them to walk, stay in your lane, hands at your side, be calm. I want to be excited. I want to run. I want to be excited about what God's done that we celebrated two weeks ago, what He's doing right now through the Holy Spirit at that font, and what He will come back to do. I want to be excited about it. And I want to show it. I want it to shine through, right? If you're happy and you know it, let your face show it so everyone around you knows it. Be excited about who God is and what He's done for you. As a child of God, as a child of light, I want to be excited. I want to dream about the possibilities of what are or what will be. You remember dreaming as a child? And yes, adults dream. Last night I dreamed of taxes. That's boring. As a child, we dreamed of what could be. As a child, I dreamed of flying through space, visiting faraway stars. Exploring not just our galaxies, but galaxies beyond. He's created an entire universe. 
just out there waiting to be seen. I dreamt of boldly going where no man, no one has gone before. But like I said, I grew up and my dreams became muted. As an adult, I went to school and I learned all sorts of stuff. Pastor Paul and I learned all that theology that he taught us last week about the new heaven and a new earth. I learned big words like eschaton and parousia, which is the, second, which is the end of days and the second coming of Christ, respectively. I know that through my theological training and from what we've already said in sermons before, that we will be coming into a new heavens and a new earth that will be free of sin and disease and death. I know these things. But what I dream about, what will it be like to run without ever getting tired? What will it be like to grow up without growing old? What will it be like when we don't need the rays of the sun anymore because the light coming off our Savior is that bright? And while we might know it in our heads, can you dream of a world free of sin, free of hurt, free of tears from death and disease. In my own personal dream, he talks about the new heavens and the new earth. Will I be able to fly around those heavens like Captain Kirk? Because I want to play in the stars. I want to play in those heavens. Because I want to play. It's the other thing as adults we don't do anymore. We don't play. We fill our life with schedules and errands and housework and chores and there's always something to do. But not for kids. Kids play. Not the adult-driven, scheduled, put it on the calendar play, but just being kids and playing. Do you know why kids play? I learned this this week. Looked up a very scientific article from the American Academy of Pediatrics. It tells us that children play in order to engage and interact with the world around them. Their unscheduled, child-driven play allows them to practice adult roles as they develop new competencies. These new competencies lead to enhanced confidence in knowing how to interact with the world at large. This play further builds a resiliency in children as they grow, which allows them to face future challenges. It's a very well-written paper, written by adults, for adults, about children. You know what it says? Kids play to figure it out. God puts them in the middle of this creation of his, and he says, figure it out. Figure out your spot in this wide universe, this wide cosmos that I have given you to play in. He gives us the book, he gives us the Bible to tell us who he is. He, he trains people like Pastor Paul to tell us what he's done for us and then he says dream and play. But we adults, we get it figured out, don't we? We know our spot in the universe. We know our spot. We know we're, we're right here on earth. And yes, there's a whole universe out there, but we can't get to it, so says our science. We say things like there's nothing new under the sun. Been there, done that. Can't teach an old dog new tricks. And so since we've got it all figured out, why play anymore? There's nothing new to figure out. But I want to play. This old dog wants to learn new tricks because there are new joys to come. Here in a few minutes, we're going to have the Lord's Supper. And what's Christ call it? He calls it a foretaste of a feast to come. He says, here's a little nibble. Dream about what the feast is going to be like.
So as we dream about what it will be like, we're invited to play, to figure out our spot, where we fit within this creation of His, where we're going to fit within the new heavens and new earth. What those new heavens and new earth might look like, we might dream about. But we play to figure out our spot within them. And you say, Pastor, but I'm, I'm old, my legs don't work right, my back hurts half the time, I don't play so well. What does it mean for a Christian to play? This. This is play. Worship and prayer and praise is play. Because what's the book of Revelation tell us? It tells us that we will be in eternal worship and praise. What is Christian play? Christian play is serving creation, caring for creation and, and our fellow creatures. When we're asking you to serve at, in, in Sunday school here and lead our little kids in Sunday school, we're asking you to play. When we ask you to do confirmation and lead our junior hires in their walk in faith, we're asking you to play. When we're asking you to lead Bible study or small groups, we're asking you to play. And yes, even when we're asking you to join a board or the, the funeral luncheon committee or the board of trustees or the board of lay ministry or the board of whatever, the finance board, whatever it might be, we're asking you to play. Play what it's going to be like in the kingdom to come. And you say, Pastor, all those things you just listed, that all sounds like work. Those meetings are boring. It's not very much fun. And Pastor, I don't have time on my schedule. I can't fit in one more thing, one more to do. My only response to that is stop it. Stop thinking that worshiping and caring and serving creation isn't anything more than play. That serving and caring and worshiping is all play. It's all preparing us for what will be. Just as a little child plays with blocks so they can grow up to be a construction worker. Or a little kid plays with toy trains and becomes an engineer. Some little boy sits in a cardboard box and pretends it's a spaceship so someday he can be an astronaut. Worship and serving and caring for creation it's all Christian play preparing you and I for who we are going to be. Last week, Pastor Paul had a great sermon about planting our feet firmly on the reality of what is. But what God has told us is going to happen. And he is right. We are not going to fly away from here. We are not going to sprout wings in a halo, donning a beautiful white robe, sitting on a cloud, playing a harp. We are not but strangers here. Our heaven's not our home. This is. He's given us an earth to live in. He's given us creation to be a part of. But with our feet firmly planted on the ground, there's the other side of that tension. There's the other side of that teaching that God wants us to dream. He wants us to be his children and all that that means. You and I are not to outgrow wonder and dreaming and play. To paraphrase a few lines from 1 John. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what a wonder that is. And what we will be has not yet appeared, but in my dreams I can only imagine the joy of what God's future will hold. But we know that when He, Jesus, appears, we shall be like Him, because we shall see Him as He is. So until then, do not, do not let go of your play. Use your play to learn how to be like Jesus. 
And in your dreams, dream of boldly going where only Christ has gone before. And in him, dear children, let your wonder and let your joy be complete. And all of God's children said with an exclamation mark, Amen. Amen. In that joy, in that wonder, in that hope of what will be, we receive from our Lord the gifts, forgiveness, life, blessings of this world. We share those with one another as we now bring to our Lord our offerings and our tithes. In our prayers today, we want to especially pray for those who are facing health concerns. We offer prayer of thanks along with the family of Pastor Josh Jones. Zoe had surgery this last week and uh, uh, surgery successful and she is recovering. Uh, they, they did part of what they were hoping to do. They uh, did not get the entire thing completed, but uh, uh, there's hope that uh, in the future they'll be able to do the rest of the surgery to give Zoe some relief and comfort from the, the struggles that she has from her cerebral palsy. So we give thanks to God for the healing that Zoe has received and that they'll be coming home here very soon. We also remember in our prayers today Joanne Britton as uh, Joanne was hospitalized yesterday. And we also today pray for the, the family of Carol Eisminger and her husband Paul as her son Chad was admitted to hospice recently. And Chad passed away this morning. And so we pray for God's comfort for the Eisminger family and all who mourn the passing of Chad. As you're able, please rise for prayer. Children of the Heavenly Father, I urge you all to lift up your hearts to God and pray with me as Christ our Lord has taught us 
and freely promise to hear us. God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name be hallowed by us and all the world. Through the pure and true teaching of your word and fervent love shown forth in our lives, graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. may your son's kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know our brother, your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen us by your spirit according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of good and evil things, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Into your merciful hands we commend Zoe and Pastor Josh and all of Zoe's family. Joanne the Eisminger family, and all who mourn the passing of Chad, and all of those who are in need who we name before you now in silence. Lord, we ask for your comfort and your mercy, praying for them at all times, Thy will be done. Father, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Out of your divine goodness and mercy, grant us our daily bread. Preserve us from greed and selfish cares, and help us to trust in you to provide for all our needs. Father, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father Almighty, forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us, so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, so that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. Father, in your mercy, for the sake of your Son, lead us not into temptation, but help us by your Spirit to subdue our flesh and turn from the devil in this fallen world and all their evil ways. Father, in your mercy. And lastly, O Heavenly Father, Deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Father, in your mercy. We trust, O Father, in your great mercy to hear us and answer us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Merciful Lord, as your children keep us amid all the temptations to doubt and fear that we not lose sight of the goal before us. Grant us every aid and blessing that we may hold fast to the hope that is ours in Christ and be prepared when he comes to bring to completion all things. To you be all glory, honor, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated.
Christ, true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Thank you. 
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us in, with, and under bread and wine with the body and blood of, of your dear Son. Strengthen our faith in you and our love for others in your kingdom and throughout our community, country, and world as we strive not only to see your love but also to continue to grow in it and be nourished through faith as your children and rejoice in the grace you give. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. And so we are. In your presence there is fullness of joy. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed. Well, good morning again to you. Thank you again for coming to join us to worship as children of God, to be in awe of all that he has done for us. There's another aspect of childhood that kind of wanes in excitement as you get older. Birthdays. You don't seem to be excited the more you have. Do we have anybody with birthdays? Uh, Bernita. Yes! Bernita's birthday. Anybody else? Baptismal birthdays. Anniversaries. All right. Happy birthday, dear Bernita. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bernita. Happy birthday to you. Blessings to you. God's blessings to you. God's blessing, dear Bernita. God's blessings to you. 